Ajeamo a shirto. Ajeamo a shirto. Ajeamo a shirto dar bun pe sot de te jar. Arabu. Tämä haisee semmoinen hirveä palaamista mulle niin kuin oh, semmoinen palaamien käry, että ei siinä niin kuin ei siinä niin kuin siellä hajoaa sissiin jotakin. Well, hi everyone. As you can see from the material I just showed you, there's something going on in Rinkepu, Stockholm. And Rinkepu, of course, is a very special neighborhood. It's a neighborhood with almost 90% of the inhabitants there being of foreign origin, mostly Muslim. Like, if you go there, what you will see is Muslim men and uh, veiled women. And uh, this isn't, of course, the first time something like this has happened. There have been a lot of these smaller riots all the time in these places like Rinkebu or Malmö. And, of course, uh, the one that got the most publicity was the... Huuspy riots a few years ago, because those were huge, like uh, they started from the neighborhood of Huuspy, which is pretty similar to Rinke Rinkebu, it's also in Stockholm, it has a lot of migrants and immigrants in there, and the riots spread not just to other neighborhoods in Stockholm, but also to uh, other, other cities. But this remained pretty contained, and the trouble started at something like 8 p.m tonight, on February 20th, and uh, there were some cars burned in there, uh, cups were stoned, and at least one cup uh, got hit on the arm. Uh, there's talk of three police officers being hospitalized, but that's not for sure, so I'm not going to vouch for that. And. Um, uh, as my friend showed you on the video, these uh, foreigners, they were or people of foreign origin, most of them are, were born here, like uh, they are second or third generation. They were smashing windows and breaking into stores. There was at least some tobacco, tobacco store to which he saw them break in, and uh, another was a little uh, grocery store, and they smashed the windows and uh, robbed the store. So uh, something like that happened. And there was there were no cops to be seen when this was going on. Only after the riot had calmed down and most of the assailants had already left with whatever loot they got from robbing these stores, uh, the cops showed up. And there were only a few patrols here and there and they didn't really do anything. They just sat in their cars without and there was no effort to uh, find the people who had rioted there was no effort to stop any damage from being done so basically these cops in sweden are like uh, they are doing basically insurance checkings that they wait for the riot to calm down they don't want to mess with these people because they are scared of them like and they have a good reason to f be scared of them like uh, something around a week ago, uh, there was this event in Rinkebu also in which 20 to 30 of these foreigners or people of foreign origin attacked a police patrol and beat up these two cops. 
So they have a good reason to be scared of them because these people have no respect for the law enforcement. They aren't like us, like they don't, they aren't polite and they aren't scared or of police or give them any authority. And they have this habit of attacking in mobs. So what the hell are two cops going to do when there are 30 people attacking them? So these areas are basically like the Wild West. If you go there and you get into trouble, you are all alone. Uh, the people around you aren't going to help you if you get victimized. And there is little chance of cops coming in there because cops don't like to come into these neighborhoods because their cars get destroyed and they get attacked. And there are 55 of these so-called no-go zones in Sweden. That's according to police information. A police report stated that there are 55 of these areas in which the crime starts affecting people's everyday life in a very severe way. And uh, uh, police and first aid and emergency workers have a difficult time working in these neighborhoods. So cops either don't go there at all or they go with big force, like they use several bat patrols. Firemen also get stoned in here and uh, they get set, set up like these people can like uh, put a bomb in a trash can, then set it on fire then they call the fire department and when the fire department comes, they start um, putting out the fire and the bomb explodes. So that's the sort of stuff these people do for fun. Like they are completely insane. They aren't like us. You, and it's completely unnecessary and uh, it's useless to wonder why these people do these kinds of things. Nobody knows. They just like to do this kind of stuff to show who's the boss. and. Uh, uh, then they set these traps for cops too, like they can claim that, uh, call, the, call 911 and claim that, okay, there was a robbery, come over here. Then when the cops come, these guys are there in a huge crowd, they have already gathered stones and bottles and stuff they can throw at the cops. And then they start throwing the rocks at the cops and the cops have no chance but to escape. There was also one person who died because of this fucking stone throwing, like, um, uh, these emergency workers went to help a person who had gotten some sort of a seizure and uh, they went to uh, an apartment but they were unable to get out of the building because the other habitants of that building were throwing stones and other stuff at these ambulance workers and while they were treating this patient who of course then died because they were weren't able to get him to hospital. Uh, these habitants of the neighborhoods all also destroyed their ambulance. <laughs> so it's pretty unreal what's going on, on in there. But anyway, this is Rinkeby tonight. So what Trump said about what happened in Sweden or what's happening in Sweden last night. This is it. <laughs> this is how it is. And it's not in any way unusual. Like, there aren't any big headlines about th this kind of stuff, because it's so common in Sweden. And when these Swedish politicians present that they don't know what Trump is talking about, they are like, oh, what's going on? Uh, there's nothing going on in here. I, c I don't understand what he's talking about. <laughs> they are basically morons. Of course they know what's going on. They just want to deny it because they are <clears throat> too proud about their humanitarian superpower to admit that they got it wrong. They want to believe that they are so morally superior to everyone else that their multiculturalism cannot fail and that their feminism cannot fail. But it has failed and denying it won't change anything. So this is Rinkebu in February 20th. Thank you for listening and bye.